All right, um, we are back and I'm um, excited to introduce our um, next speaker. Uh, her name is Jennifer O'Connell and she's the president of Athena Sustainable Materials Institute. And she's going to give a presentation about uh, the life cycle assessment for buildings and roadways. So Jennifer, thank you very much for being here and I'll turn it over to you. Well, thanks Dave for that introduction and thanks everyone for being here. Good morning. Um, okay, I'm Jennifer O'Connor with the Athena Sustainable Materials Institute and we're a longstanding nonprofit group. We do uh, research and advocacy and public service in life cycle assessment for construction. Uh, what I'm gonna to do today is gonna to be a very, very quick uh, uh, introduction to life cycle assessment for construction, and then we will take a uh, take a look, just get a sample of some free software tools that our organization provides that make LCA possible for uh, for folks in the construction industry. All right. All right, so uh, life cycle assessment or LCA measures the consequences of consumption. And if you think about all of the materials and energy that are required to construct something, it's a lot of consumption. And every time we consume anything, there are uh, environmental impacts related to that, uh, to that consumption. So life cycle assessment is an analytical technique uh, and we can bring that to decision making. It helps us validate our sustainability choices and it helps us understand if our decisions have real impact. So it's a really powerful tool to uh, bring a data basis to sustainable design. All right, so LCA is a holistic performance evaluation. What that means, it's a cradle to grave accounting of environmental flows and their impacts. So how that works is we do an inventory of all of the materials and resources and energy coming into a product system and we inventory what's coming out, the waste and the emissions. And we do that over the entire life cycle. So from resource extraction, all the way through to, uh, to end of life. So as an example, an LCA for a carpet would include the materials uh, and emissions involved in making the carpet, uh, transporting it to the site, installing it, vacuuming it over its uh, lifetime, replacing it periodically over the life of the building and hauling waste away at end of life. So we do an inventory of those flows and uh, then we estimate the environmental consequences of those flows. And we end up with a, uh, a number of important environmental metrics and I'm showing some of the most common ones that we express uh, here on the screen, starting with global warming potential, that's uh, what we call a carbon footprint in the world of LCA, or, or sometimes you may hear that called embodied carbon. So life cycle assessment quantifies a comprehensive environmental story over the full life cycle of a product. And it's been used in industry for decades to help inform uh, sustainability focused business decisions. And more recently it has come to uh, to the world of construction materials and sustainable design. Hopefully you can get a sense of this text on the screen. I realize it's a little bit small. This is an example of an LCA study for a building. And uh, it's showing the summary life cycle impact assessment results for this particular project. So, so the question is how do we get these sophisticated results. Uh, well, it requires access to a lot of data and it requires access to LCA expertise. And, and that's asking a lot of the design community. So for that reason, software tools have emerged that make all of that uh, possible. Let me give you a sense of, on the next slide here, of 
of how that works, how we do it with our tools. We have two software tools that we provide for free to the public. One is to do LCA for buildings. The other is, is to do LCA for paving projects like, like roadways. These tools have been around for a long time and we've been around for a long time as the North American experts in this arena. So here's how we approach this task. We start with inputs from the user. So that includes the quantities of materials used in the building. And then a number of other inputs like location and an optional input is operating energy. Then we tap into the back end, which is a lot of data. It's the fundamental environmental data on materials and, and energy. It's our assumptions about transportation distances and product replacement schedules and about what happens to materials at end of life. So then we, we do calculations and we uh, end up with a big set of results. Now, I, I, I want to uh, just flag here for a moment uh, an important issue in any whole building LCA study, no matter what method and what tool, and that's the issue of uncertainty that is inherent in, in LCA in general, uh, and particularly for long-lived uh, products like, like buildings. So it's important to bear in mind the uncertainty and the margin of error, and that's because LCA is an estimating science. It is based on assumptions and incomplete data, so results need to be looked at as a guidepost and not an absolute. The factors that affect reliability of results include <laughs> Uh, the bill of materials. So you need to have an accurate and, uh, and comprehensive bill of materials for the model. The background data needs to be accurate and consistent and all of the life cycle stages need to be included. And I'm mentioning these three factors because some new software tools are emerging that come up a bit short on all three of these factors, uh, which just again causes me to emphasize the issues around uncertainty. Okay, I'd like to just take a moment to talk about the life cycle because this is so important for a good whole building LCA. This slide is showing the nomenclature that we use for the building life cycle. A complete LCA will include all of these life cycle stages. And the reason for that is so that we avoid burden shifting. And that's when we may have savings in one part of the life cycle, but in fact, all we've done is shift that to another part of the life cycle. And an example of that might be, I'm say looking at some, some LCA data for a product and it's just covering those red boxes, A1 through A3, and most product information just covers that part of the life cycle. And if I stop looking there, I may miss what's happening in the rest of the life cycle with that product. So imagine a non-durable product with a really low manufacturing impacts but has to be replaced many times over its lifetime. And if I'm not looking in that use stage, in that B4 box on replacement, I'll be, I'll be missing the true uh, environmental impacts for that product. Okay, so let's uh, talk about our free software tools. I'll start with our buildings tool. Um, this tool has been around since 2002. It is free desktop software, although we're working right now on a web version. It's used widely by design professionals, students, sustainability consultants, uh, any kind of project type, any phase of design. The whole point of it is to make this complicated science of LCA uh, accessible for non-experts. And I'm, I'm just going to run through a couple of screenshots just to give you a sense of, of how the tool works. You, you're you going to start by selecting uh, the closest city to your project so that we can provide regionally accurate results. Next up, the software needs a bill of materials for your project. So there are two ways to do this. In early design, you don't have a bill of materials. You can let the software calculate it for you based on your inputs for spans, loads, and types of assemblies. Or later in design, you may have a bill of materials. Perhaps it's, it's coming from a BIM file. You can import that and then uh, map those materials to how we uh, 
identify things in the software. You can then add or subtract uh, any number of, of construction materials choosing from a large library. You can um, make custom concrete mixes. And then when the model is, is all finished, then you can generate a whole set of different kinds of results, tables or graphs, uh, results through all the life cycle phases by assembly and so forth. Uh, give you a sample of a graph or export everything uh, to Excel. If you uh, chose to enter operating energy for the project, you can compare operating and embodied impacts. You can also compare uh, easily compare two projects side by side. So maybe there's a baseline project and you've done improvements. You want to see uh, how much better that is. This is a primary purpose of LCA, so it's a really important uh, feature of the uh, of the software. Going to I'm watching my time, and I'm thinking I will just quickly uh, click through, and I want to just spend a minute. Uh, talking about our other tool, which is a web application. It's called Pavement LCA. So this one is for paving projects like, uh, like roadways. So I'll, I'll give you a couple of screenshots of this one. Um, similarly, uh, as the buildings tool, you're going to spend some time building your model. Uh, there are a series of input tabs to create that model, starting with designing the roadway. So here's where you specify the, the physical nature of the roadway and um, select materials. Then there are other tabs uh, to add additional information for the model, like the roadway rehabilitation schedule uh, shown on the screen here. You can optionally enter information about vehicle use of the roadway, and then that will add the impact of the roadway surface on fuel consumption by vehicles. And then you're uh, on to a whole set of, of detailed results uh, that cover uh, the life cycle assessment results as well as life cycle cost results. And again, everything can be exported to Excel. All right, so that is the end of that speed tour of, uh, of LCA. Uh, I want to encourage you, if this is of interest to you and you'd like to know more, because obviously 15 minutes is not enough to cover all of that, uh, go over to our website. That's where you'll find the links for software. You'll find um, video tutorials on the software. You'll find lots of other information about life cycle assessment. And while there, join our mailing list so we can keep you up to date on the software and on any um, upcoming in-depth training in the software. So I'll end there. Thanks for attending. Thanks for your interest in life cycle assessment. Well, one quick question, Jennifer. There was a question from the audience. Have you done an LCA for the Envision version four? And hopefully you understand the question because I am not following. And can the tool be used for precast road construction? You got about a minute, <laughs> minute roughly. Yeah, tough. Um, okay. And Envision version four, uh, no, the answer is no, we haven't. And uh, last time I looked at those sustainability programs, they had downgraded the LCA requirement, but I will look at version four because I may not be up to date. Can it be used for precast? Possibly. Possibly. Okay. <laughs> I'm happy to follow up. <laughs> I can't Great. answer that question, unfortunately. Excellent. Well, please uh, do reach out to, to Jennifer directly. And Jennifer, do you mind putting your contact information in the chat as we're wrapping up here? And then we will move on to our next section. Okay. I'll try to figure out how to do that. <laughs> or, or just you can reach out to her through the website. So we'll go from there. Thank you, you very much. Reach, you can reach me through the website. Thanks very much.